This is the Memory and Resistance Laboratory podcast. I am Latipa, Director of the Memory and Resistance Laboratory and Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. The Memory and Resistance Laboratory is a hub for anti-racist, decolonial, and feminist of color artistic research. In this podcast series, Memory and Resistance in the Time of COVID, students from UCR interview people across the fields of education, art, medicine, and labor organizing to ask about the larger political, social, historical, and economic impacts of our current circumstances for vulnerable communities. In this episode, we are joined by Kiri Dalena, a visual artist, filmmaker, and human rights activist who lives and works in the Philippines. Kiri is interviewed by Zaina Wasim, a third-year student majoring in Global Studies and Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. Um, Hi, everyone. So today I have Kiri Delena from um, the Philippines. She'll be talking a little bit about um, her work as an artist. Um, and I have a few questions for her. So um, before we get started, um, Kiri, can you talk about um, a little bit about what you do and your career? Um, a little. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, hi, Zaina. Thank you for inviting me to, to your podcast for your class. And I'm Kiri Dalena, and I am a I'm a visual artist and a filmmaker from the Philippines. I I've been, I was born to a family of artists, visual artists, so it was uh, kind of natural for me to be in this environment, but it was uh, a deliberate decision to become a, a filmmaker. Uh, when I was in the university, I became, uh, I became interested in uh, documentary filmmaking and started attending workshops. I, so I didn't go to art school. And after that, I began to make documentaries and experiment, short experimental films. And it progressed into creating as well visual artworks. Uh, these can be in the form of installations, uh, photographs, and uh, sculptures. So, uh, I am also a, a human rights activist. I've been an activist since I was in the university. And at the moment, I I work uh, as an artist. I work as an individual and in collectives, and usually political artists' collectives. And I am an active member as well of human rights organizations such as Kadapatan in the Philippines. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, So I'll get started. Um, So starting off, can you please talk a little bit about the work that you do as an artist, filmmaker, and human rights activist? Uh, Okay, so I'm, um, I I started as an artist. I started uh, by making terracotta or or clay sculptures. They're usually, they're figurative Mm -hmm. and usually of of women. Uh, my, My mother was a is known to be an exponent of terracotta and feminist art in the Philippines. And she influenced me in sculpture. So I worked with terracotta, but later on when I became an activist and um, there was sort of an urgency to the work that needed to be produced. And I naturally shifted to making, to using the camera. Mm -hmm. So I, so that was when I started to make films. I was based outside of the capital of the Philippines at that time. I was based in a region um, where there were a lot of clusters of um, uh, factories who were, who would picket and who who would do strikes. And so that was my first exposure to documentary Mm -hmm. or documentation. I I couldn't even call it documentary at first. Just, Just immersing with the striking workers and 
and at that time cameras were not yet popular so i would shoot uh, whatever um would happen like when they would be there would be attempts to break the strike at in the middle of the night so mm -hmm. i would document it for for the workers okay. and uh, yes essentially that's my that's my practice um until now i make i make documentaries um I was, I'm not very prolific. In fact, I, I am only able to make uh, short films, I would say even every, every three years. But, but I also work as a, as a filmmaker for human rights organizations like the Human Rights Watch, which has been focusing on the drug war um, in, the last, uh, in the last three years in the Philippines. So we recently came out with a, a report which came with a video which I, I shot and where I did help to do the interview. So it's about the lasting harm of the drug war on children in the Philippines. Um, can you talk a little bit about like um, the documentaries that you've made um, and that how you've worked with the Human Rights Watch? Um, so as an artist, in your opinion, what are some beneficial ways to highlight highlight social justice issues through art? Um, I would say that the okay, so the, so the the not the the benefits of highlighting. I since I mentioned that I was I was born to a uh, to parents who were both artists. They were both socially engaged, so it was. It sort of became uh, became natural. My my father was a political um, cartoonist, and then my mother was a feminist who was making um, sculptures about the plight of women, especially in the in the home. But I would say that it was a deliberate choice to decide that I would like my I, I would like to devote my art to. To highlighting social justice issues, it it happened when I was in the university and I saw that uh, it could be it would be a powerful combination if if artists or youths who had access to or the privilege of having equipment and as well as um, skills in different art forms would. Um, would collaborate or would form solidarities with mm -hmm. with farmers, with workers, indigenous peoples, and 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 although it was it was just, it was not a fast process. In fact, I I was really stumbling in the sense that uh, I the, the 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 technology, the film at that time was also new to them, mm -hmm. and and the I was still learning the process of editing and as well as they were also um, not yet, um, the workers were also not yet familiar with the, the process mm -hmm. as well. So it, it had to be, it had to be a very, um, it had to be a mutual exchange. Um, because we all, we all know that, or we all assume that, that it is a good, it's, automatically beneficial to highlight um, social issues but there are a lot of considerations in the process like you have to make sure that um, in the process of telling the story or showing the showing the um, issues you also make sure that no one will be harmed in, mm -hmm. in whatever footage you show um, so that there were these are things which I did not um, automatically know when I started but mm -hmm. learned in the process. Um, right, so thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so just like going off of that, um, what do you think are some major like challenges um, that you have faced in this field? The, well, the major challenges that I would, I faced, um, like I, I I started, I would say, 20, 20, roughly 20 years ago. And the, the first one was, I would say, 
uh, learning about about the issues meaning it, it was it was also a challenge to have the technical equipment but parallel to that you need to also understand um, understand the situation understand the, the the conditions and be going in um, being open and being um, being a student again and being um, being humble enough to, to to acknowledge that you are not the expert here you are not the you are not the you're not the storyteller really you are just you are you are a collaborator in in a way uh, i always have to to think that way um, and the challenge was also um, of course um, safety when i say safety it's not just for me um, but it's all it's it's also for the for the the people you are filming or you are including in in your in your shoot it's it's easy to to just shoot to jump from one story to the next but i feel like uh i need to to have a, a connection or a relationship with with the the people I, I am shooting, meaning I cannot just leave a, a topic or a subject mm -hmm. like it's uh, so this is sort of like the, the difference with news and in my practice. Um, I cannot just leave a topic because um, and I understand that this privilege as well that mm -hmm. I can can go back, I can stay on so I, I do my best but uh, the challenge is also sustaining sustaining this um, this kind of uh, practice, sustaining it in terms of not just financially, like how to how to support yourself, how to um, how to continue to to make a film about a topic that is no longer um, they would say like popular. Mm -hmm. But but for for me, I would still think that it's relevant. It is not yet finished, so I feel like it needs to be continued. Um, but at the same time, there are so many issues that are happening that are just coming in through time or mm -hmm. surfacing through time, and picking, deciding where you you put your energy at some point. It just yeah. becomes so so difficult, uh, and so. So, so that has been um, a challenge. Um, so just going off of that, um, you know, another challenge that we're facing right now is the COVID pandemic. Um, so how do you think artists can support or uplift uh, marginalized groups um, that are being affected by this pandemic? Well, artists in, in, in our context specifically, when we when the lockdown happened we knew that the the groups that we were working with were one of the most vulnerable they're from the urban poor they lost their breadwinners or the, their husbands who used to they were already struggling before the pandemic came so the first thing that we felt we needed to do was ensure that they would have food they would have access to access to uh, relief goods the um, the implementation of the of the lockdown in the philippines was very very problematic and um, it it gave us we understood how necess necessary it was but but it was like being put suddenly put in the hands of of leaders that you don't trust or who have done wrong to you so mm -hmm. it was challenge and we i think a lot of a lot of artists um immediately thought of how to support um how to support the the communities or the families by means of, of food and mm -hmm. also also support uh, healthcare workers so a mm -hmm. lot of artists also came together to 
um, to pull like um, artworks and put the proceeds to um, to PPEs. But then later on, we also acknowledge that, that artists were also having a very difficult time in in surviving because the the lockdown extended from fifteen days to to thirty yeah. days, and then now it's it's close to eighty. So. We also formed our own groups of networks to help each other, like having collective funds um, for photographers, also for, for women artists. And uh, that has been, that has been a, it's an ongoing struggle, um, knowing what is best to do and mm -hmm. how to support each other remotely. Um, um, so, in your opinion, um, you know, often like we see that art is criticized because of the truth that it often evokes. Um, how do you think, or like, how do you think, um, or what is a good way to deal with this type of like criticism when you were given that from people? Uh, it. The question reminds me of something that I read from a friend recently. Uh, she was, she's an actress in one of my my short recent short films and she said something like um she's confused should she post about s something positive or should she post about something that is about the truth um and of course uh, the automatic um response of of the majority is okay you have to you have to speak about the truth mm -hmm. because um anything that is good or anything that this positive is based on truth, which I would, of course, I, I, I agree with. But then why are, why are artists being criticized first for when they speak about the truth? Or why is it, why is it being viewed as something negative when you talk about the truth? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I responded to, to that to my friend, to, to the actress, and said that perhaps it would also be the most authentic thing to do is to, to speak about why at this time um, they're posit being positive mm -hmm. as, and being truthful are seen as opposing ideas. And let's speak about your confusion and perhaps this, this can help even more because it, you're, you're intelligent, but then you yourself, you're you're confused about about lessening your posts about the truth and just mm -hmm. focusing on something positive. So, so this confusion is is um, a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, we are the truth is painful and 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 difficult, and uh, I would. From from my experience, I understand why sometimes people need to need to create a distance from this, and uh, people who do it quietly and intelligently, um, and who do not criticize those who do, are people that I feel I understand because um, during the lockdown, at some point, my family also suffered from someone who was becoming ill, and we didn't know at we did not get the results yet if it was COVID and um, the stress of reading about reading the news yeah. every day and, and reading about the deaths was just too, too unbearable. So I understood. So I myself advocated that, that um, we, um, we create a, a distance first from mm -hmm. sort of like delay a bit. Yeah. Um, so, in this particular uh, situation, I understand why it's necessary, but but this does not mean that you resort to you resort to fake news or to um, because positivity shouldn't mean should be should not shouldn't be the equal of spreading untruths. Mm -hmm. um, I make sense. Yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing. It okay. definitely like brings more um, light to like stuff like this because we often don't really talk about um, 
the criticism that artists often face, um, but it's important to like shed light on that issue. So thank you for sharing your opinion. Um, and then last question, uh, do you have any advice for young um, students who are emerging artists and passionate to work in this field? Okay, so it's um, no, no question about it. We, we need art, we need more than ever, I think we, we survive or we are, we are kept sane by, by art in this time, like music, films, um, writing, reading, um, it's uh, theater, drawing, it really kept, kept many of us sane. But it is, it is uh, the other question is like, uh, um, the other challenge is also the struggle of surviving um, if this is your primary means of, mm -hmm. of livelihood. But I would say that um, it's something that we need to think about. But in the context of the of the pandemic, um, whether you're an artist or or an engineer or or a chef, more than anything, we have to think of being being human first. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we we all we all are uncertain about when we will be able to make the, ne the next film or, or, but I believe that we are, we focus on being human first and making sure that everyone, um, even the weakest of, of our society is, is safe. Um, we will find a way for, for art to, to find an, another form, mm -hmm. to find, um, it might not be now, or perhaps you're already doing something that's already considered art, uh, but you don't know it yet. So um, I would say that don't don't worry too much. I mean, it's 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 understandable to be anxious that if you want to be an artist, but but it's a time where the future of being an artist is, is difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but don't worry and um, just stay, stay human and be ethical and think of um, art will always find a way to um, to change and mm -hmm. to adapt to the to the times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's always good to think about like how art can change, you know, as time goes on, and especially like in new forms and stuff, especially under current political events or social events. Um, art is always like changing. Um, so that's a really good point. Um, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, so this concludes the um, our podcast. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day um, and talking to me about this. So thank you so much. Um, before I end, do you have any last questions, comments that you want to share maybe with our viewers? Uh, last comments. Well, I hope I hope you are all well. I hope you are all safe, and um, I'm I'm happy to hear from someone across the globe. <laughs> and it, it's. Uh, I, I, fe I feel that we are fortunate to still be able to communicate and speak about art and think about, about art. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope that we're, we'll all be okay. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's all. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I know you were